We are right now in the center of Amsterdam. This used to be the, one of the main drug areas. The, the street that you see over there is the, is the Zeedijk. This used to be one of the areas where, until let's say 15, 10 years ago, um, it used to be one of the open drug scenes of uh, Amsterdam, where day in, day out, literally hundreds of people gathered to buy, to sell, to meet each other. Uh, and as this was one of the main drug dealing areas, there were all kinds of facilities or, or shops or um, bars who sold stuff for drug users. Over here, we've got, on the corner, we've got a snack bar where they used to sell syringes. Um, you can't imagine how this entire pl place has changed over the last uh, 15 years. Uh, we are now walking into one of the main tourist attractions of Amsterdam. Uh, but it used to be uh, the, the, like, it looked like the Lower East Side in 20 years ago in the in New York. Uh, the, the police who had an office around the corner uh, officially declared it a, a no-go area um, and did recommended all Dutchmen, tourists, anyone not to enter this zone because it was, although it was, it's quite small, it was not recommended to go there. You might lose your luggage. The police station was located over there in the in the Warmoestraat, and once every hour, the police came from the behind that desk and they started running. And uh, no, they walked until they came to this place, this corner, and then they really started sweeping the entire street empty. And but until at the moment that they were 100 meters away from the corner. Most of the drug users already collected behind their backs and uh, there was a big crowd again. And now it's the, well, the, the biggest dangers in these streets are bicycles. And it's, uh, <laughs> this was if you talk about the, the hot spot of Amsterdam at, at during that time, I'm talking about, the, let's say, the 1975-1990. Uh, that was this area, the beginning of uh, the, the Zeedijk, which is called, uh, in Dutch, the Kop of the Zeedijk. The, there were tens, fifty, hundreds of, of uh, drug users uh, uh, gathering here. Um, where you see the hotel right now and the various nice bars, all of them are closed. There was no hotel. The bars were um, were run down, closed, um, and often they were ran by people who earned a small living by giving opportunity for people to come in, have a coke, deal a little bit, and move out. Over here is um, that, that, that happened that is uh, the center of uh, w one of the main tragedies in the, the Amsterdam drug history big somewhere in the early 1980s I think it was 82 uh, from one moment to another um, th there were cases of um, what, what was called poisoned heroin and uh, people started dying, they got paralyzed, and um, it started with a couple of people, and then in a few days' time uh, uh, there were uh, 16, 20 people, uh, and they died of smoking that heroin, smoking her heroin. And no one knew what was the actual cause, um, except that it was related to some type of heroin and smoking. So what the police did, they had the idea that it might be, so that, that heroin, it needed to be researched very fast because people were dying. 
they were in, people were in, uh, in the um, ambulances were going uh, off and on. So what the people, the police did, they just raided th this place and um, they, they said, hey, police over here. So everyone immediately emptied their pockets, dropped all the stuff that they had. Um, and the police sent everyone out, collected all the heroin and brought it to the laboratory. They never found out what the actual source of the of the uh, poisoning uh, was. But all in all, uh, around 40 people died in a couple of weeks. These were the crowds that more or less lived in this area 25 years ago. There are hardly any pictures from the, this period. This street was so run down. It was already run down and then it was more or less occupied. People started, no other people had, could find cheap bars and uh, so it, it, gradually this, the entire, drug using, uh, let's say the early drug using community in the 1970s, they started to live here, come here more often, buy and, and selling, and after a while they really took over. And then the original, or, or was left of it, the original inhabitants of this street, they started leaving, and that left behind an entire empty street with hundreds of drug users, day on, day in, day out, uh, in the snow. Uh, that entire situation continued until uh, the early 1990s. And uh, no matter how much police force was used, the police station is down the, down the road and they came here with horses, with cars, with entire battalions of policemen sweeping down this, uh, this emptying the street. But it just didn't help. Uh, it, um, they uh, brought all kind of additional uh, uh, drug services. They, uh, they, together with the people from the neighborhood, they opened a a kind of a drop-in center on a on a boat around the corner, um, and then later on in the evening, the police came. Uh, let's say at 11 o'clock, and they, they wanted to have the street clean, and they started walking through the street and said, "Everyone to the boat! Everyone to the boat!" And uh, the drug users were expected to go to some temporary boat around the corner and that of course all it didn't work in the, in the early 1990s there was a, a different approach actually and that w brought this type of success there was a combination of uh, more restrictive law enforcement it was a, a combination of targeted uh, uh, drug services, for instance, consumption rooms, housing, um, and an, um, an activity that really stimulated economic activity in this neighborhood. And uh, the, the, it started with the, the, the hotel that you see over there, um, but there was a, a separate uh, unit at the uh, city hall that supported small businesses, small clubs, uh, sushi bars, comic shops, to s and that provided loans to those people. So that was a, it was a combination of uh, enhancing economic activity 
tailored drug services for the people who are living in, in this area and a more restricted um, lo law enforcement that in the end that this entire process took 10 years changed the entire environment and the entire um, livelihood of this central part of Amsterdam and uh, that's why you know, I'm t talking about things that used to be um, while at the same time you know there, there are still hundreds and thousands of, of drug users in Amsterdam but they are not any more dependent on no, the black market, they are able to use the drugs that they buy or that they get or that they are prescribed in a consumption room. They've got shelters um, and they, those shelters work together very closely with the police. Um, uh, so it's, there's a, and over here there's a, it has become part of Amsterdam again. So, so that's a huge change.